Okay, everybody, welcome to your third online training session. What I want to be talking about today is all the things you need to be looking at for your grading. Grading is what? A week, two weeks away. So today we're going to be doing your patterns. We're going to look at your push-ups and sit-ups. We're going to look at your boxing drills and your kicking. So stay tuned, guys. We'll see you in the next video. All right, guys. So I thought we'd start your warm up today with your push-ups that you guys need to do for grading. Uh, the number of your push-ups you have to do goes in tools of five, okay? So white belt, your minimum is five push-ups, okay? And then it goes up by five every belt group from there. So yellow one is 10, yellow two is a 15, and so on. For our push-ups, they have to be perfect though, okay? So today I'm gonna use a pillow. You guys might use a target, a boxing glove, whatever you have at home. You're gonna put it somewhere around the room, okay? From here, my hands are gonna line up with the back of the pillow, or the back of my boxing glove, okay? From here, my legs shoot back, so my body's flat. Okay, I don't want to see any bums in the air or down like this. Okay, my body has to be flat. From here, when I do my push-up, my shoulders need to line up over my hands, not behind. And from here, I bend my arms, touch my chin, and up. That's one perfect push-up. Two, three, four, and five. You'll notice the whole time my body's flat and I'm bending my arms. I'm not bobbing my head down, okay? So make sure you're bending out your elbows all the way down, all the way up doing your number of push-ups. Making sure once you've done that, shake out your arms and legs and do it three times, okay? So for black belts, they will be doing 50 push-ups three times. For yellow ones, I wanna see 10 push-ups three times. Off you go. Okay team, so we thought it'd be fun for you guys at home to go through a new boxing drill. This is for white belts all the way up to blue belt threes. So I'm gonna go through the drill a couple of times and if you can, I want you to practice this, if not in front of a mirror, do it in front of your family so they can see what the finer points look like. So the drill looks like this. It's a right uppercut, left hook, followed by a right cross. Now for white belts and maybe even yellow belt ones and twos, you haven't seen an uppercut yet. So we're gonna break down nice and slowly how to execute. And for this one, I'm gonna roll my right leg trouser leg up just so you can see what happens with my right foot. So the first things to note on an uppercut is the back foot and the hip do the same thing they do on a right cross. On a right cross, my toe or my heel and my knee twists and it helps drive my hip and shoulder through the target. On an uppercut, exactly the same thing happens. I twist and my uppercut comes off my chin, pop, 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 and pop, goes straight in the middle and it lands on the bottom of the chin. Okay, now at this point I'm all twisted up, so I want to bring my right hand back to my jaw and twist my left foot and my right foot into that hook. And then I rotate back and I execute the right cross which you've seen a million times before. So we'll do it slowly again. Twist, right uppercut, touch your chin, twist, left hook, touch your chin, twist, right cross, I'll do it on 45, twist uppercut, twist hook, twist right cross, I'll do it 45 this way. Twist uppercut, twist hook, and twist right cross. Now if you've got your parents with you, they can even hold their hands in those positions. If you're lucky enough to have a training bag, the uppercut would sit in the middle of the guts. Left hook, and right cross down the middle. Or you can just move around doing your shadow box. Up, twist, through, bounce around. Up, twist, through, bounce around. Up, twist, and through. I want you to spend a few minutes on this drill, guys. Let's see how it turns out. We'll see you in the next one. Okay, team, so we thought we'd incorporate some defensive drills in today's box. And for this exercise, you're going to need your mother or father or your training buddy. Now, if, it's, if it is your younger brother or sister, please make sure you have supervision. Yes, it can be fun, but I don't want anyone to get hurt. If you have a pool noodle at home, this is the perfect training tool for this exercise. If not, a rolled up newspaper or magazine will suffice, but we don't want you using like a broomstick or wood or something hard, right? There's just too much risk for injury. So something soft, if it does hit you, it's not gonna cause a problem. Now, to get the exercise started, we'll do our bow and smile. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start with just basic covers and maybe some parries. So I'll ask Mr. Mole if I put the noodle towards his face, he's gonna parry it out the way. Parry one. Parry two, cool, we'll do some moving around. Parry one, parry two. And this is just the idea of little movements, making sure you can knock the, the target away from your face if it gets too close. Now we're going to look at covers. Side covers here, so I hit to one side, hit the ball and covers. Hit the other side, hit the ball and covers. We can move around, pull, move around, pull, move around, pull, 
I'm going to incorporate the parries again. Parry one, parry two. Next one we look at is rolling or how to weave. So this time I'm swinging the target across at around eye level. Mr. Mullen's job is to make a small movement under the movement. Here we go. Weave one. Weave two. Very good. We're moving around. Weave one. Weave two. Very good. Now we do some parries. Parry one. Parry two. What about some covers? Cover one. Cover two. What about some weaves? Weave one. And weave two. Very good. Let's change sides again. So now as a training partner, what I want to do is see if my partner can bring all this together. Not only bring all the different movements together, but can they attack off of the back of that? So let's see if Mr. Mullen can do maybe a parry followed by a, a two punch combination. Oh, my fault. We'll do a parry and then a two punch combination. Parry, one, two, and we're moving. Parry, one, two, and we're moving. Parry, one, two, very good. What about a cover and then a one or a two punch combination? Cover, one, two, and then we're moving. One, two, then we're moving. Cover. One, two, then we're moving. And finally, we can do the weaves. We do a weave. One, two, and moving. Weave. One, two, and moving. Weave. One, two, and move. Now, if you've got a dynamo on your hands, parents, you want to incorporate the whole lot and maybe throw some curveballs at them and see how they adapt. Remember, guys, it's okay to get hit. It's only soft. If you're going to make a mistake while you're training, it's the time to make it. Have a little fun with this drill, guys, and we'll see you in the next video. Okay, team, so now it's time for your patterns. This is a little bit tricky on how we're going to structure these patterns videos because obviously we've got a lot of different patterns in our club. So whatever's happening, whatever feedback or critiques we're giving right now, I want you to always be referring back to your online training syllabus. That has your pattern done forwards and backwards, and it has all the critiques in those videos. But for this, for the purpose of today's video, we're gonna go through white belt up to blue belt three and just show you some key points that we want you to focus on. So. Mr. Duncan, we're gonna do the first critique or the finer detail on white belt pattern. So Mr. Duncan, if you can show me a long stance, please. This is what white belt pattern's all about. Getting a good solid foundation on the floor and making sure the posture's correct. So let's have a look at the long stance. Now, back leg perfectly straight, both feet facing the direction that you're going. This is easy on the first one, but when you rotate around and go the other way, that's when your feet can take on a mind of their own. So both feet dead straight like you're on train tracks. What I want to talk about is how far you bend the front knee. This front knee should be bent far enough so that if you're looking down at your toe, you can't see it. If Mr. Duncan bends that less, you can see his big toe right now. If he bends it just enough so the knee covers his big toe, that bends enough. Your low body arm should be one fist gap from your knee. And then we're looking at your posture, tummy tucked in, shoulders back, chest out, and chin up high, okay? So these are the details, guys, that every single stance in basic pattern should look exactly like that. If you're lucky enough to have a training buddy in your lounge room, make sure they're checking every step, twist your feet, bend the knees, straighten the back leg, and adjust your posture. Okay. Okay, yellow belt one. So the most important part of critiquing a yellow belt one pattern is the section in the middle when you have to slide your back leg into your cross body blocks, and also when you slide your back foot up into your high block. So what I'll do is I'll get Mr. Duncan to very quickly go through, why don't we start from one, two, three, four, five, we'll get to that, ready? So go through real quick, one, two, three, four, all in shorts, and now we're in long stance, and punch, freeze. Now, when I'm teaching this pattern, we're always talking about when you get to these sections, it's always, always your back leg that slides up. Okay, whether you're going from this cross body block or this high block, it's always going to be your back leg. Now, Mr. Duncan, show me your muscle. Now I'm going to get you to aim with your elbow on the left arm, so that tells us where we're going. And then he's going to bring the left foot up and slide the, sorry, the right foot up and slide the left arm across the centre. Okay, step, punch. Muscles, block the other way. Step, punch. Okay, long stance, low block again. So again, we're in the front position in our long stance. We're about to go into our high block. So, muscles, 
Cross the forearm so you're ready for that high look to come up. And which leg is it? The slides. You got it. It's the back leg. Up. And there's your high look. Now remember, guys, when you go into your front kick from here, put your guard up. Snap. Kick. Muscles. High block the other way. Snap. Kick. And then we do our long stance level to the back and our long stance punch. The most important part of the pattern, guys, is making sure your right or your back leg is sliding up into those positions. Any troubles, you refer back to the online videos, guys, or you can comment in the box below. Okay, yellow belt two. So what we thought was the, the most important section on your yellow belt two pattern is how you transition from your high blocks around into your cross body. Block. So I'll get Mr. Bang to come in here. This is move number 12. Okay, now, what I always say to people when they're learning this pattern is to shake this arm because you're remembering that that's the arm that's about to do the block behind. So, Mr. Bang's gonna take his left foot and spin it all the way behind his body and he's aiming with the other elbow and then he cuts that hand across his center line. Now, to get ready for the next position, he shows his muscles with the left and he's gonna point his elbow behind as the right foot transitions over to pop. We'll do that one more time so you can see it again. So at move number 12, you shake the, the right arm around, you spin behind your body, pop! And then you're gonna take the other arm, the left arm, as the foot drags across and pop it through. This is probably the area of the pattern that most yellow belt twos get confused with, guys. Again, refer back to your online training videos, but that's the section that you'll get stumped on. Okay, yellow belt three, so we talked about your particular pattern. Where I feel that most of you come unstuck here is transitioning from your back stance on move seven. So we're doing back stance, knife hand block, and it's how you actually get power from this position into your long stance and your right hand punch. So what I want you to do is have a look what happened to Mr. Duncan's back leg when he pops into this position. Go for it. Okay, we come back to that long stance again, our uh, back stance again. So at this step, the position, the heels are in line and when Mr. Duncan transitions, the left foot cuts across and he pops his back leg straight to get power in the right punch. Now, can we do the formation for the next side, Mr. Duncan? So here we've got the same scenario, come forward a little bit. So Mr. Duncan's heels are in line, he's got his fingers in line with his eyes. Now to get power in the left punch, he moves from the right foot across and pops the back leg into long stance. What we find a lot of yellow belt threes will do, can we go back to the back stance again, is they leave this leg kind of lagging back and it doesn't allow the hips to travel through. So come back again. So your focus when doing this technique is to pop that back foot into position so the leg's nice and straight which means your hips and shoulders will be square. Good luck, uh, good luck with this one, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Okay, Blue Belt 1, so there's many tripping points in your Blue Belt 1 pattern. Hopefully at this stage, you've got all the broad strokes uh, sorted out. But what I wanted to mention is the section in the pattern where you have an outer forearm block, you do a front kick and then cut back for a cross body block. So I'll get this done. You're holding that position, back stance, outer forearm block. You'll notice already the feet are nice and square. You've got an L shape happening here and both knees bent. Now the front kick goes to the head and you're going to snap this foot back to where it starts. Let's go, Mr. Duncan. Pop, pull. Now, that back foot often what will happen is the knee bends in. So it kind of collapses on you, right? So you've got to make sure after the kick it comes back out into a nice, strong frame. The other thing I want you to have a look at here is the cross body block is performed after the foot's landed or just as it lands and it's not cutting across this way, you're not trying to block there. This block ends up being more on a 45 degree angle. So can we change and block this side now, Mr. Duncan? So this is an out of front block. We kick, get the back leg, the structure all sorted, and then pop, and you'll see this block is more kind of facing 45 degrees towards me. If you try and center this across your center line, that back leg will crumble and you'll lose your balance. So that structure is really important, guys. This section of table four is one of the more confusing or complicated areas, so please work hard on getting this to happen. See you in the next video. Okay, team, so in table five, the second blue belt pattern, there's quite a few things that we, we want to be looking at, but what we thought we'd cover today is when you're heading down the center and forming the block, so what we'll do is we'll do the first 11 moves. Okay, so you can check it out, so we go. First move, long stance low block, slide back hammer fist. Second move, long stance low block, slide back hammer fist. Now, 
In order to get power in the block moving forward, Mr. Duncan's got to center himself and form this block so it cuts across his body. And he's going to form and cut across his body for the second block. What I find, just stay there, Mr. Duncan, a lot of times people go from here and this first block kind of folds out or it just kind of appears. It's got to cut across your center line and be strong. Now we'll go front kick, back fist from the opposite shoulder. And then form and cut across your center line. Start back with Mr. Duncan. We do it again. Front kick, back fist from the opposite shoulder. And form across the body line. Now on the last move, number 11 here, there's no kick. But this right hand's going to touch the opposite shoulder. Big here. Ha! So it's really, really important, guys, for the blocks and the back fist that they're coming from the right spot. Have a little play around with that, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Okay, Blue Belt 3, so for your pattern, there's a couple of sections we want to talk to you about. What I'll do is I'll get Mr. Duncan to freeze on move 4. So this is back stance, out of forearm block. Now, a lot of kids get confused with which leg is about to go forward. Now, I'm going to ask you, look at the camera, or look at the image, which one of Mr. Duncan's feet is facing forward? Okay? Not this one, it's that one. So when you look down at the proper back stance, you know which foot's about to move forward because it's facing that way. Mr. Duncan, form, step. So that's the first one. On move number five, you know it's your left leg that steps out into long stance. Now, on the next one, if we just, uh, so where are we at now? Move 12. We've gone to 12, we've brought the blocks down. This is another area where kids get totally baffled as to which leg moves forward. Well, which one is it? The first time it was the left leg, so now it's the right leg. Okay, it's the right leg moving forward and it's the left hand that comes up to form. So call and step out to the right. If you've been in the gym, I tell you to step towards the stereo, but if you're at home, you've got to remember, the first time you step into long stance is with your left leg, the second time you step into long stance is with your right foot, okay? Really important bit of feedback, guys. Remember to refer back to your training video if you get confused. Okay, everybody, so now we're gonna have a look at how you kick or how you're gonna be kicking in your patterns. So for whites and yellow belts, we're gonna focus on up charge and front kick, by kicking with the ball on the foot. Now, Mr. Mullen's going to demonstrate how you would probably kick when you first start the kick, which is toes forward. Just show me a normal front kick, Mr. Mullen. So that's, that's the easiest way to perform a front kick. However, in your patterns, you're required to show how the kick would be most effective by putting the ball on the foot to the tummy or the chin of your opponent. Now, for yellow ones, twos, and threes, your kicks are always going to be going to the head. So I'll get Mr. Mullen to demonstrate a few up charging front kicks, kicking with the ball on the foot. So you'll notice now the toes are pulled back and it's the ball of the foot just beneath the big toe that's giving the impact to the kick. And again, very good, and one more time. Now this is a hard thing to do, especially when you start to kick higher. The higher the kick goes, the more your foot's going to want to take on a different shape. So what you can do is you can start with a low kick to the knee or the body and you want to hold it out there long enough to make sure you've got that foot. The foot is forward but the toes are pulled back and then you can work it to the body. Now a really good training aid is to actually kick towards a wall. Now when I say that I don't mean go up and boot the garage door, I mean place your foot on a wall or your punching bag, somewhere that your parents say it's okay, it is what we can do on the punching bag. And Mr. Mullen's gonna try and rest the ball on the foot in the bag, and he knows it's right because his toes aren't touching and his heels not touching the bag. It literally is just the ball of the foot. Okay, so that's for our white belts, yellow ones, yellow twos, and yellow threes. Okay team, so now we're looking at Yop Chagi Psyche. This is a kick for Blue Belt 1s, 2s and 3s. Now the most important thing with Yop Chagi Psyche is the foot position. The mechanics of the kick come in time, but what's hard to get your head around is how to hold your foot almost like a golf club, right? So I'm going to get Mr. Dun uh, Mr. Mullen to demonstrate. So he picks his foot up, it's bladed, he shoots it out. Now you'll notice the foot is rolled over, the heel is the part of the foot that's going to be making contact, and he's got his toes pulled back, bring it in and drop it down. Now, learning it to the body is one thing. If you start to work at the body, that's a good place to start, or the body or the knee. But getting it up to the head, that's when your legs and the muscles start to twitch and the foot position can change. So I'm going to get Mr. Duncan and Mr. Mullen to demonstrate a yok shaggy psyche to the head. Ah, and you'll notice it's, it's easy to roll that foot out. Okay, so if it's locked over, that's what we want to be seeing. Now, for blue belt ones, twos and threes, you've got psychics in your patterns. 
We want you to make sure your foot is bladed. Other training exercises you can do is rolling your feet out and working on the knife edge of your foot, or again, placing your bladed foot up against a wall or a training bag so you can feel that the only part of your foot that's touching is the knife. So let's give that a go, Mr. Molan. So it's the heel and the edge of the foot touching the shield and nothing else. So if you were to do that on your carport wall or a wall on the outside of your house, then just place it there and just check. Is my the edge of the foot touching and nothing else? Blue bit ones, twos, and threes. That's your exercise for this week. Give it a go. Okay, guys. So thanks very much again for signing in today and doing your training. Really, really important. We're grading around the corner that you're training regularly, not just in front of the camera with us, but also at home practicing your pattern. You've now got the online training course, so everything you need to know is right there. What I wanted to sign off with today is. Just asking, you know, how are things going at home? You guys might not be at school by now, or if you're, if you're still at school, it might be your last week. So what I want to talk about is just different ways that you can keep yourself busy, active at home, and helping out your family too. So let me tell you, I'll share a story about what I did with my family over the weekend. Okay, now my girls, they're eight and 11, they're nine years old and 11 now. Um, they've got an area in the house which has all their toys and their, their gear. And what we did is we set about organizing it all. So they were in charge of deciding where different things went. They had their Barbie dolls over in this section in a drawer. They had their Shopkin stuff over here. And they, they organise it in such a way that everything is right where they want it to be. They know exactly where it is. They grab it. They can play with it. They can put it away. And they took a lot of pride in organising and structuring their play area in this way that they were proud of. Right? They were like, look how neat it is and we're going to keep it this way. We also did a little bit of organising in their bedroom. We moved the beds around. And we just made sure that the house is kept in a way that you know, it's easier, the kids know exactly where to put their clothes, they've got their washing basket, they bring that downstairs. And I want you to understand that right now with what's going on, everyone's got a busy brain about what things are happening and what will be happening next week and are we going to school or not going to school. And one of the best things you can do is you can organise and structure your area of the house. Now some of you might be lucky enough to have chores, you might be lucky enough to have you know, things that you're expected to do and you've already got that structure. Now, if you're in one of those houses that you don't have too many obligations or things that you need to be doing around the house, then showing your family that you're actually thinking about being organised, it will really show them that you're thinking about the kind of things that are important right now. Structure, routine, keeping things clean and tidy and having those responsibilities and being proud of the things that you're doing at home. Um, there's a lot of great ideas we hear about kids that are talking about you know, their environmental acts or their random acts of kindness and they're, they're, they're amazing ideas. But really what it is to be a young martial artist or a young person growing up is to show that you can take on responsibilities, show your parents, your family, that you understand your role in the household is to keep things you know, neat and tidy. So what I want you to take away from this chat is have a look at the house, have a look at where you are spending most of your time, lounge room, the gaming room, the study or wherever it is, and try and organise it in a way that you know, you're, you're being responsible for that area. Okay, now for whites and yellow belts, this is something that you should be looking at doing as your random acts of kindness. For blue belts and above, you want to be thinking about, I do this because I want to show my mum and dad that I'm responsible. I do this because I want to have a clean working environment and I know if it's clean and I'm respecting that working environment, then I'll do better work. So let me know how you go with this one, guys. Really, really important that you're looking after your family right now and this is an, idea, an ideal way to show it.